So this is the box girder that uh, we'll be modeling today and uh, it's a very simple bridge. Uh, basically I wanted to highlight the construction uh, staging of my disable in this example. So I chose a relatively simple example that is uh, simple enough to uh, create but uh, at the same time you are able to understand the construction sequence or uh, construction staging concept in my disable. So this is the layout of the uh, uh, presentation or the training session today. So I'll be starting by defining materials and sections. Then from scratch, I'll start creating the geometry by creating nodes and elements. And then we'll apply time-dependent material properties to it. After this, uh, I'll apply the boundary conditions and apply loading onto the structure. Now, uh, while uh, applying the boundary conditions, I'll also create some boundary groups in which the boundaries will be assigned and then they will be activated during the construction stages. And same thing will be done during the definition of uh, uh, various static loads onto the structure. This is how the construction sequence is laid down. Uh, at first construction stage, uh, we'll begin the uh, day one with the piers and abutments already in place with an age of 30 days. That means they have been cured for 30 days. And then uh, this particular stage, CS1, will be of 21 days. We are giving 7 days for putting up the formwork and 14 days for setting off of the uh, concrete uh, because the segments are cast in C2. Then stage 2, uh, the segments are activated with an age of 14 days and they are cured for uh, the next 14 days. So uh, this stage 2 will be of duration 14 days. Then once the uh, segments are uh, cured and the concrete has uh, gained its strength of uh, uh, characteristic strength at uh, 28 days, uh, in stage 3 it's just a, uh, of one day duration where we'll be uh, applying post ancient tendons onto the structure. And final stage will be of 10,000 days where the uh, tendons will be first crowded and then self uh, superimposed dead loads will be applied onto the structure. And the reason we are having this uh, stage as uh, uh, 10,000 days is we want to consider the long term losses onto the structure considering the creep and shrinkage. Then we will quickly do the analysis and uh, go to the uh, results. So this is how our uh, bridge uh, looks like in the overall layout. It has two spans and a 35 meter each. And then there's a very uh, slender column in, uh, underneath it, it's, uh, which is 10 meters in height. And so, and this is the box section that we'll be modeling today. And this is a visual representation of the construction sequence. So stage one, as I said, we'll start with uh, the uh, abutments and pier already in place. SG stands for structure group, BG stands for boundary group and LG stands for load group. So the entire model can be divided into three parameters. Structure which comprises of all the elements and nodes. Boundary group which comprises of all the boundary conditions including supports and link elements and load group which comprises of all the loading conditions. So uh, it's a complete 4D analysis where the three dimensions that is the loading uh, boundaries and structures are brought together against time. So in CS1 we'll assign some uh, duration and activate certain boundary group, uh, sorry certain structure group with certain boundary groups and certain load groups in the first stage. Now then comes the next stage we'll activate the structure group corresponding to span then come the next stage, we'll apply the post tensioning strands and the uh, final stage, we'll apply the superimposed dead load structure onto, this, uh, onto the structure. So basically, what all things we have activated in the first construction stage will be carried forward to the second construction stage, then it will be carried forward to third and fourth and so and so forth. And um, if you want to use some temporary boundary conditions, then you can apply them uh, in a given construction stage and then take it out during the uh, uh, whenever they are like taken out from the uh, uh, real structure. Let's say for supporting this span if you had several 
uh, temporary supports you can uh, model them right here and then uh, take them out uh, once you are doing the once you have done the post engineering but i have not uh, uh, gone into those details and try to keep things simple for the first time so uh, I'll uh, come back to this slide once we start doing the construction staging and let me start with the basic model. So this is how the Midas Civil window looks like. It's a new model I've opened and I'll right click, go to the properties and material, click add to define the material concrete and ASTM and I'll select 6000 PSI grade concrete. I'll click apply. Then I can select steel material. I can go to ASTM standards and select A416270 low relaxation strands and then click OK. So in this way I can define materials and similarly I can go to sections. I can click add and go to precess concrete section or PSA sections where I can choose how many cells are there onto the uh, sections so uh, I want to have a single cell or two cell I can three cell, in cell, asymmetric sections, value type sections so there are various uh, parameters you can choose from you can enter the name of the section and then the dimensions but to save some time what I'll do is import this section from the previous uh, project that I have so I'll click on import and from a, a previous project where I've already used uh, the similar section I'll import it from there. This previous project file has two sections defined one is box section one is peer I'll import both of them I'll click OK and now if I double click on the box section you can see the dimensions as shown here and I have used a, a section offset as center top so if I click on display centroid you can see the section offset at center top uh, the reason of uh, choosing section offset as center top is uh, for defining tendons it becomes easier uh, to control the geometry if you have a reference point at the top or at the bottom uh, and especially when you're using some kind of tapered sections uh, the use of uh, section offset makes all the more sense because defining tendons uh, with varying depth will become uh, uh, quite cumbersome but uh, here we are not dealing with uh, tapered sections but anyway this is a uh, is a fundamental approach for box girders because most of the time uh, when uh, you are dealing with uh, let's say balance can lever bridge uh, then you are uh, most likely to use tapered box girders I'll close this dialog box and also show you the peer sections as you can see in this bitmap image right here it's a solid round and if I double click you can see the dimensions as well I'll click close. Now uh, I'll start creating the model and as you can see at the bottom in the status bar the units are the imperial unit system. I'll switch them to SI unit system since for this project I have the dimensions in kilonewtons and meter. Then I'll right click on the model view window and select nodes and select create nodes. and under create node I'll create a node at the origin click apply then you can see the node created right here and I'll use select single to select this node and then right click go to elements and then go to extrude and here I'll select the material as C6000 uh, section as box girder and translate them through equal distance in the x direction as 35 meters and repeat it two times and then I'll click apply the moment you do that you will see that uh, the entire bridge created and from here onwards I'll start modeling the supports and piers then I'll use single select tool and select the three nodes that are, uh, that are created I'll right click, go to nodes and translate them through equal distances that is in z direction as minus 3 meters 
because that is the depth of the box girder click apply so you can see the nodes are created right at the bottom of the girder where actual bearing location is and then I'll use single select and select the node number 5 and generate a peer underneath it for this I'll right click element and go to extrude and this time change the section shape to peer and the distance will be 0 comma 0 comma minus 10 meters and repeat it just don't and I don't want to like replicate it so I'll just say once and click apply so as you can see in no time the bridge geometry is ready now we'll go ahead and define the uh, time dependent material properties so I'll click close here right click go to properties and select time dependent material creep shrinkage then I'll click add and here you can see you can enter a name I'll use the name as C6000 and then I can select a code based on which I want to uh, define this material behavior so as you can see we have CBFIP 1919 uh, sorry 1990 1978 ACI, PCA, Combined, Ashto and other uh, European Indian standards. Along with this we also have a user defined feature which allows the uh, engineer to have uh, more control over the uh, concrete material property for creep and shrinkage and uh, if you have a given set of uh, data uh, you can go create your own uh, curves for uh, creep and shrinkage but um, as we know CBFIP uh, code gives the best uh, simulation or best results for creep and shrinkage for concrete material I'll be using uh, this code and here I need to enter the characteristic compressive strength of the concrete and uh, uh, to be honest with you I have no idea how much C6000 or 6000 PSI is equal to in kilonewton per meter square so what I'll do is just quick, uh, quickly close this dialog box go to the status bar change the units from uh, to kips and inch then right click back to properties time dependent uh, material creep and shrinkage click add and enter the material name as C6000 code being CBFIP and I definitely know it is 6 KSI characteristic strength of this concrete at the age of 28 days relative humidity being 70 days and sorry 70 percent and notational size of the member I'll use any arbitrary value for the time being let's say 12 this notational size is actually the uh, volume to surface area ratio and the definition can be found uh, and the formulation can be found here and uh, this notational size is usually used for CBFIP if you choose uh, some different code you will see volume to surface area ratio then uh, you can select what type of cement you are using and what's the age of concrete at the beginning of shrinkage and then if you click on show result you will see two curves the first one is creep coefficient against time and then shrinkage strain uh, against time now what happens is uh, when you define a construction stage with certain duration and when the member is activated with a given stage the program reads the corresponding creep uh, uh, coefficient and shrinkage strain values and then use it uh, in determining the stresses uh, or the secondary effects in the construction stage so these curves are quite important to determine the uh, behavior of your structure then you can click uh, OK and close after this I'll right click again go to properties and go to time dependent material compressive strength now here I'll define the gain in compressive strength so I'll click add and enter the name let's say uh, C6000 I'm using same name for different type of materials and uh, but you can uh, completely uh, feel free to go and define any name you want that suits uh, you better you can write compressive strength you can write uh, uh, anything uh, except my name of course so uh, 
you can uh, generate uh, the curves as per different codes as per CBFIP and here you can enter uh, the mean compressive strength uh, this is a, a, a point you should pay attention on uh, since we are using the code as CBFIP uh, you can uh, you need to enter mean compressive strength which is not the characteristic compressive strength FCK is the characteristic compressive strength uh, in that you need to add uh, Delta F which is the standard deviation so uh, I'll enter that value so 6 is my characteristic compressive strength plus 1.166 which is the standard deviation for concrete usually it is 8 MPA or 1.166 KSI and then you click on uh, redraw graph and the program will show you the gain in compressive strength curve as per CBFIP so the program knows that your characteristic strength is still 6 KSI but uh, your uh, mean compressive strength will be 7.166 uh, KSI then I'll click OK and close so once we have defined these curves we can be and you can see they are blue in color this means that they have not yet been assigned to any material property so I'll right click go back to properties and go to time dependent material link basically this is a link that through which we'll associate the creep and shrinkage curves that we defined the gain in compressive curve that we defined with the actual material that we are using and then you just need to click add modify and then so you can see the grade C6000 that you are using will follow this creep and shrinkage and this compressive strength gain curve. Then click close. Now if you re remember for creep and shrinkage we use the notational size for the timing is 12. But uh, clearly our box girders and our pier have different notational sizes. So the program provides an option of auto calculation of these uh, values. So you can go to properties, go to change element dependent material property, click on select all. So the program will select all these sections that are there and uh, check uh, uh, confirm that the selection is on auto calculate and the code is CBFIP. Then you click apply and close. So the program will calculate uh, the notation size for each and every member that is there in the structure and then replace. Uh, this value for uh, replace this value for uh, the computation of uh, creep and shrinkage at the given uh, point of time during the analysis and uh, for this purpose it was easy for us to compute the entire uh, uh, volume to surface area ratio and just use it for once because it's a uh, symmetric and uh, uh, uniform or prismatic section but if it was a tapered section where the notational size or the volume to surface area ratio is varying then uh, you can see this feature has a clear advantage and if you want to verify what is the actual notational size you can right click and go to tables and you'll see that the actual notational size for these members is 17.87 and 29.53 click close here and so we have defined the time dependent material effects now we'll move on to define the uh, supports so right click go to boundaries and then go to supports so uh, now we'll start defining the boundary group name as well and assigning the properties to them so I'll click on this button with three dots enter the name as let's say uh, peers and uh, abutments and click add and then close basically I'll, uh, uh, I'll use just one boundary group to uh, represent all the support conditions uh, the reason being I'm activating all the boundary condition at the same time in the structure if I was supposed to activate different uh, uh, boundary conditions at different time intervals then uh, I would need different boundary groups so if you can uh, if I bring back that slide so you can see that I'm activating boundary just uh, in the first construction stage after that there is no more boundary groups are activated and um, 
similarly uh, all the things that I've, I'll be activating in one uh, shot in one construction stage I'll be using uh, I'll be putting all those elements in one group so I'll have one group for peer and abutment which will have the peer element and the abutment nodes um, then I'll have a different uh, structure group for span because I will activate this in a different construction stage and if you see the loading uh, uh, load groups they are different like sulfate is activated in the first stage so it's different I missed out a diaphragm load in uh, construction stage 2 which will also fall in a different load group then in construction stage 3 we'll enter the post tensioning so it will uh, have a different load group and similarly for superimposed dead loads so number of uh, groups depend upon how you want to uh, how and when you want to activate uh, the uh, loading boundary groups or uh, uh, structural elements in different construction stages so I'll select that boundary group that I just defined I'll have a fixed support at the base of the pier so I'll restrain all the degrees of displacements uh, and all the degrees of rotation and select the node at the bottom of the pier and click apply then I'll select the nodes for the support or the bearing nodes where I'll have I'll release all the rotational degrees of freedom and it's an expansion bearing so I'll release uh, DX also and just have DY and DZ restrained and click apply and now I'll right click go to property as uh, boundaries and select rigid links in rigid links uh, I'll be creating uh, the master and slave node behavior throughout the structure and I'll select the boundary group first then I'll select the master node as the uh, node where the support is applied and the slave node which is directly above it it will be a rigid body connection and I'll copy the links along y-axis and uh, the distance will be in uh, meters so what I'll do is change the distance from inch to meter very easily and distance will be 2 at 35 meters and then click apply so you can see the program has created the rigid links right there if I switch to a wireframe geometry you can see it more clearly so you can uh, from here appreciate that the unit systems are no longer a limitation with this kind of software you can switch the unit systems as many number of times you want and uh, there's nothing uh, like you have to stick to a particular unit system for a given project and change everything based using a calculator manually because the program will take care of it now I click close here and go on to define the structure groups as well so I will go to the group tab and you can see the boundary group that you created is right here I will right click on the uh, structure group tab I will click on new with three dots basically if I if you click new you will just be able to define one structure one group at a time so I can define the group as like peer and abutment then I will right click and then again click new and then I can define the next group which is uh, span so and but if I uh, click new with three dots I can define multiple uh, structure groups in the same time so when you just need to add one or two here and there you can just right click and select new now I'll go ahead and define the uh, the elements that will comprise uh, the structure groups so I'll select the span and uh, click on the span group drag and drop it over the screen and, and if I double click you will see the element selected and uh, since uh, I'm activating the peer assembly and the abutments in uh, in first construction stage so I'll select the nodes that are corresponding to peers and abutments and put them under the peer and an abutment structure group now having done this I'm uh, ready to define the uh, loading uh, data onto the structure so for this I'll create the load groups so right click on the load group click uh, click new with three dots and enter the name as self weight SW um, then I'll enter SDL for superimposed dead loads 
then I'll enter uh, diaphragms then I'll enter PES for uh, priestess or post tension then click close so I've got four uh, load groups right here now I can go to load tab and select static load cases and now here I'll enter the name of that I'll define the load cases self fade and I can select the type of load case I want to have I can select uh, either uh, based on the uh, code specification that this load has to be a DC type or DW type or if I want to see the effects of this kind of loading only during the construction stage and not uh, in the post construction stage then I can choose uh, that type of load to be construction stage only but for the timing I'll stick to uh, the standard uh, specification that is sulfate as DC STL will be for bidding surfaces so, so, uh, so DW um, diaphragm it can be DC and then PS for pre-stress and I'll select PS from here also then click add then I click close here so I've defined all the load group I've defined the load cases now I'll uh, assign values to these load cases so right click go to loads and select self fade now I'll select the load case name I'll select the load group name and I'll select the factor in the given direction so along uh, Z axis minus one is a multiplier for gravitational direction and then I'll click add this way I've defined the self fade then I'll right click go to load and select nodal load for defining the diaphragm load I'll select the load case name as diaphragm load group name as diaphragm and then I'll enter the value and uh, I have this value with me in kilonewton so I'll change the units from kips to kilonewton and this value is minus 850 kilonewton and then I'll use single select select the node on which I'm applying it and apply it vertically having done this I'll right click again go to element uh, sorry go to loads and there I'll select element beam load and select superimposed dead load as load case name and load group name and I want to have a uniformly distributed load onto the structure you can choose whether you want to apply that as a, at an eccentricity or at the centroid location if you uh, check this option off the loading will be applied at the offset location which is uh, where you have created your center uh, section offset which is, in this case it is the section top or the center top and I'll enter the value as minus 12 kilonewton per meter and then I'll go ahead and select the uh, elements on which I want to apply it and then click apply once uh, we have applied the uh, superimposed dead loads now we are ready to define the uh, tendon pieces load so I'll click close here and as you can see on your screens on this uh, stage tab we have the uh, tendon definition basically you can locate the same under load priestess loads and then under tendon property tendon profile and then tendon priestess loads so basically defining tendon has three steps involved the first step is define a tendon property I'll click on tendon property and click add here I'll enter the tendon name as web because I'm going to apply them in the, in the web of the girders then I'll select the type of uh, uh, tendon I'm using it can be pretension post tension or external tendons since it's a post tension uh, uh, structure I'll go with internal post tension material I'll select as A416 270 low relaxation as I defined and then I'll select the total tendon area which uh, is from if I click on that button with three dots I can select the strand diameter and I can enter the number of strands that make up this tendon and then click OK so you can see that the program has computed the nom nominal uh, tendon area and added here 
then I can enter the duct diameter which is 0.103 meters and the relaxation coefficient I'll assign this as per CEB FIP and use uh, the coefficient as 5% then you can see the ultimate and the yield strength of the uh, tendon material are given here the curvature friction factor wobble friction factor to be accounted since it's uh, post tension are given here we, have, we are also considering uh, anchorage slip at the two ends of about six millimeters and uh, we, are, we can consider either bonded or unbonded tendons so I'll click OK. So we, we are going ahead with bonded tendons. Then the next step is defining the tendon profile. So if you place your uh, cursor there, it will show you what the icon represents. So I'll define the tendon profile now. I'll click Add. And here I'll enter the tendon name. That is T underscore L for the left web. I'll select the tendon property that I defined. And then I'll use single select tool and select the sections through which I want to apply the tendons. So basically I'm using this uh, through these two uh, members. I can select the input type as 3D, the curve as spline and then uh, if there happens to be number of tendons passing the same location or same profile, uh, you can multiply the effect of a single tendon by checking on typical tendon and ent entering the number of tendons that follow the same profile. But right now, since we have defined the, all the strands into one tendon uh, in the uh, tendon property definition, so we will not be doing this here. Now, uh, we, we, are, we have reached a point where we need to enter the coordinates for this tendon. And for this, uh, you can, if I bring this dialog box right here, you can see uh, we have a spreadsheet which has the tendon coordinates. Let me bring this right here. So what I'll do is I'll just select the coordinates that I have for the tendon. I'll hit Control C, come to the program, and then click here once and hit Control V. Once we have entered the coordinates, I'll fix the point where the curvature is changing, and then I'll tell the program these points are defined with respect to which coordinate. Uh, basically I know that uh, my uh, elevations for the tendons are defined with respect to top of the section and I can register this with the program also by clicking on the profile insertion point is the ith end of element number. Now I don't remember the element number so I'll just click here go to that element and click again there it will enter the element number 1 then I'll just click apply and you can see the tendon created I'll repeat the same thing for the right web so I'll change the name from T underscore L to R and I can either modify the parameters uh, the um, coordinates right here or I can just delete the entire thing copy from the spreadsheet and paste it right here fix the points of uh, change in curvature and then click OK. So you can see the two tendons are defined in no time. If I turn on the solid view you can see the tendons are neatly placed in the webs of the two in the two webs. Now I'll uh, move on to the third step that is to define the tendon pre-stress. I'll click on this icon, select the load case name as PS and select the load group name as PS and then here I'll select uh, the uh, two tendons on which I want to apply this load. So I'll uh, put them into the selected list and I'll choose if I want to apply, as, I apply it as a stress or a force. I'll choose uh, stress and while stressing at both ends you can specify which end it was checked first because that will affect the friction losses in the tendon so uh, I'm choosing first checking is at both ends so this means uh, they are checked simultaneously from the two ends and I can enter the uh, values I, I have this value in MPA which is Newton per millimeter square so what I'll do is change the units to Newton and millimeters 
and then go ahead and enter the value which is 1330 MPA and 1330 MPA so you can see different unit systems can be very easily used in the program now uh, when we do the actual post tensioning in the site you you can uh, decide whether the tendons are grouted in the same stage as you are post tensioning or you want it to be grouted in the following construction stages so here we'll enter one that is grout the tendons uh, after the pre-stressing stage by these many number of stages so this means if I activate the tendons or apply the tendon pre-stress load in stage 3 the grouting will be done in stage 4 if I enter the number here as 2 so this means if uh, I uh, post tension the tendons in stage 3 that they will be grouted in stage 5 so uh, you must get this thing uh, correct so I am grouting it in the next uh, construction stage so therefore I have entered grouting after one stage and then click add and then click close here now I have defined uh, all the uh, static loads onto the structure uh, and to save time and lay more emphasis on the construction stage analysis I'll not be uh, going through the live load definition in this model uh, rather than that I'll have some more things to uh, show it to you uh, during the during this uh, session so uh, now I'll go ahead and define the construction sequence and it will be and you'll see that it is exactly the same way I laid it out on that uh, uh, slide so I'll click here select generate and enter the construction stage name which is CS and I want to have four construction stage one two four as suffix I'll check on to save step uh, uh, stage results and if any additional steps I've used click OK and now I'll go and uh, customize or modify each and every construction stage so I'll double click on it I'll enter the duration as 21 days I'll click on the element tab select the group uh, uh, representing the pier and abutment and I'll activate them with a stage of uh, with an age of 30 days this means when the day one the uh, construction stage is uh, construction is starting the pier and abutment are already in place and being cured for 30 days then you can come to the boundary tab and you can select the boundary uh, group you can click add to activate this boundary and come to load tab and select sulfate thumb rule of mighty civil construction stage analysis is self weight must always be activated at first step of first construction stage and thereafter if you have some members being activated in the later construction stages the program will automatically compute their self weight and add it when the elements are activated in the field so uh, do not try to simulate the self weight of some members in uh, first construction stage through point loads and then later on activate the span and activate the self weight uh, this will lead to incorrect results so you should uh, activate the self weight no matter what happens in the first stage even though your elements are activated in the following steps then click apply here and I'll move to the second construction stage and this construction stage is for 14 days so previous 21 out of uh, those 21 days 7 days were given for putting of the form work and 14 days were given for pouring of the concrete so in stage 2 when the uh, when the span which are cast in situ are activated they are actually 14 day old so I'll activate them with an age of 14 and then no new boundary has to be added and on load tab I'll activate the diaphragm load onto the structure then click apply so now for uh, the span is already 14 day old 14 days old and now this duration is 14 more so by the time we come to construction stage 3 the span has gained is a required strength of 28 days and then I can just make this stage of this uh, day, uh, day uh, duration as one and under loads activate the post tension uh, or the pre stress loads and then click apply and the final construction stage will be for 10,000 days and 
I'll just activate the superimpose dead load onto this stage. And since I have uh, mentioned that the grouting will be done in this following construction stage, this is a stage in which the program will automatically grout the tenants. And then I'll click OK and click Close. Uh, now, since uh, we have uh, we are done with all the definition part, I can go to the analysis and select construction stage analysis control, where you can click on time dependent effect and see the time dependent effect controls that are there. You can choose whether you want to have creep and shrinkage at all. If you want to have, you want to have just creep, just shrinkage, or both. You can control the iteration steps here. You can consider the tendon tension loss effects for creep and shrinkage. You can consider tendon tension loss effects for elastic shortening. You can consider uh, variation in compressive strength. If you want the effect of uh, uh, time dependent uh, material and on elastic modulus to be carried forward to post construction stage, then you can certainly check this on and consider that as well. You can also consider the conf uh, rebar confinement effect by checking this option. Right now, I'll be sticking to this default, and then all the loading that you will apply in this construction stage model will be lumped together under CS dead load. That is construction stage dead loads. But if you want to uh, extract a particular loading out of this uh, lumped loading, you can choose that loading and put it under CS erection load. That is. Uh, that will be uh, determined uh, that will fall into the category of varying surface and uh, utilities but right now what I'll do is uh, stick uh, put everything lumped together in the CS dead loads and uh, you can choose to consider the concurrent force effects in the construct uh, during the uh, construction stage analysis and you can also uh, uh, choose to see the results for uh, each and every part of composite sections but we are not using uh, composite sections here so this will not affect uh, our analysis and you can check on consider initial tangent, uh, tangent displacement for erected structures basically then the program will be able to give you the uh, camber deformation it will be able to give you uh, the cumulative deformation and it will also give you the deformation due to the loading that is activated in that particular step and I'll quickly go through these results then I'll click OK here and uh, as you can see there is just uh, the span length is 35 meters so the analysis will be the results will be uh, given at five different points I, J, half, one-fourth and three-fourth of the length and uh, uh, certainly that will not be acceptable because the results will actually be at uh, uh, quite far intervals so what I'll do is select the members and uh, uh, do pay attention to this step as this is the beauty of the software I'll select these members after defining everything that is applied and then divide this into let's say seven pieces and click apply the, uh, when I've done that and if I go back to the groups you'll see that the group has already been updated that is uh, with the divided elements uh, the number is updated to 14 if you come here and see the uh, uh, loading value if I right click and display on the screen it has also been divided and distributed throughout the length if you see the tendon profiles uh, if I right click and go to properties you can see the the number of uh, assigned elements have been automatically updated so the unlike other softwares which uh, suffer from these kinds of drawback during construction stage analysis or uh, once they have defined the groups and uh, loadings and other uh, uh, parameters and they make any changes they have to go back keep a record of all the changes and update the groups uh, uh, one by one but the program is intelligent enough and takes care of these kinds of uh, changes let me display tangents and display the loadings and now we are good to perform analysis. I'll click perform analysis and save then save this with some name. Click save. And the analysis has been completed and as you can see it just took about like two point one seconds. 
uh, very simple analysis, uh, simple model. And I can cycle through the construction sequence by clicking on this um, text uh, field and select CS1. And I can choose to display the boundary conditions. So I can choose to display supports. So you can see the supports activated. It is an exact replica of what you saw in the slides. Second step, the span is activated. And third step, oh, let me display the tendon profiles. Miscellaneous tendon profile name, tendon profile points. You can see the tendons coming into picture. And the fourth stage, you can see the loading coming onto the structure. Let me display it onto the screen. You can come to loads and select all the element beam loads to be displayed. So in this way you can see the construction sequence, how it has been laid down and uh, now what I'll do is switch to, I'll just clear this display. Let me just un display this, okay. So now, uh, let me cycle through some results real quick. Uh, coming to post CS, I'll just uh, first verify whether my loading data is correct or not. So right click, go to uh, reactions, reaction forces, select cell fade, and then click on this button to generate the table real quick for cell fade. And now if you put together uh, the all the structure cell fade, it should match this value. Let me scale it down to kilo newtons or uh, uh, better if I scale it down to kips. So you can uh, do the summation by multiplying the cross section area and the material density. You can get this force and just verify that the loading is correct or not. Then uh, I'll right click go to deformation, displacement contours, and then just because of self fade, let me see how much is the deformation of the structure. You can see it's about uh, 7 millimeters, let me change it to inches and you can see it's about like 0 0.23 inch, 0 0.29, approximately 0 0.3 inches. So basically there's no uh, uh, highly undeformed uh, shape or abnormal deformation. So this means all the nodes and members are properly connected. Um, let me uh, move on to the forces and come to beam diagrams. And here, just because of self fade, let's see how much is the pending movement value. And as you can see, this in foot uh, kips foot foot kips. You'll see this value. So, I mean, uh, and this graph also looks the diagram also looks uh, pretty correct because uh, it's, uh, it's it has interior support, and this is due to the self fade. You can expect this kind of diagram. Hence, our modeling is correct. Now, I'll move on to construction stage results and view the results one by one. So I'll come to the first construction stage, uh, which is which has just peer in it. Uh, let me see uh, from second construction stage. You can see the results for CS dead loads that will sum all the dead loads onto the structure, which is primarily just the self fit for now. And you can notice the values that are shown here. And uh, once I go to CS summation and click apply, you can see the values are same because the elements are just activated on the first step. But if I come to the last step, that means when the age is 28 days, you can see the uh, variation in the bending moment value. And this is where the time dependent effects kicks in. Because if I come to first step, the elements are just activated. So there's just self fade acting. Now, due to the time dependent effect, you can see the values are changed. Now coming to this third construction stage where we bring in the uh, tendons and you can see the bending moment as reduced as expected and then if I click apply on the last step you can see the uh, bending moment slightly changing and the uh, last construction step oh, sorry last construction stage first step is uh, where you have added the uh, superimposed dead load onto the structure you can see the bending moment and when you come to the last step and click apply you'll see the increase in the bending moment because of the time dependent effects kicking in. Now similarly you can see the results for each and every construction stage for deformations also, displacement contours. You can come to displacement contours and go to second construction stage and due to summation loading 
you can see the displacement that is occurring at different construction stage at first step last step then you come to third construction stage you can see the time dependent effect playing its role with the post tension tendons coming in the displacement is reduced to a certain bit but when you come to the final construction stage and final step click apply you'll see that this is uh, the def overall deformation that is occurring in like 10,000 uh, days I mean 10,037 days this is the total duration of construction stages and you can choose to see uh, the uh, these are the camber uh, values that you are looking at you can see the current step uh, displacement this means the displacement that will occur due to the due to all the loads that are activated during this stage only if you want to see the real uh, displacement that is the summation or the cumulative displacement you can click apply and this is the cumulative displacement of the structure so the program is able to generate all these different uh, results for construction staging uh, for uh, deformations and forces and same thing can be done for stresses also you can choose beam stress precess concrete section you can select uh, 10 different locations on the, along the order of fiber and uh, choose let's say for top fiber for uh, sigma xx or sigma xx summation you can check off the deformation and see the stress values at the top position at the bottom fiber position so you can see the reverse graphs you can use solid fill so for the top fiber and bottom fiber you can see the values and uh, um, due to time limitations uh, I'll not be going into the uh, the design features of uh, my civil for pieces concrete sections we will be taking up uh, that up as a future topic uh, but right now I'll be sticking to these results so all this uh, uh, results are as I mentioned uh, can be extracted in uh, spreadsheet also so you can right click go to let's say forces beam diagrams you can click on this button with three dots you can select which construction stage which step you want to see um, and then click apply the program will generate those results for you uh, also you can see uh, the tendon tension loss effects you can come to post CS now and under results you can go to uh, result tables and uh, go to tendon and select tendon loss and here you can select the tendon strand and which construction stage you want to see the result let's say final construction stage when all the losses have occurred click apply and you will see the values for uh, uh, tendon stress losses let me change it to kips and inch so you can have a better idea about the values that are there and the losses that are occurring so you can see the stresses after immediate losses oh uh, if you remember I applied the values in MPA so let it be Newton and millimeter square so I applied 1330 MPA since it's a uh, post tension strands so due to immediate uh, friction losses or oh, sorry immediate uh, relaxation loss and uh, uh, anchorage slip you will get this kinds of uh, losses then there is elastic deformation this is the ratio between the stress loss after elastic loss and the intermediate loss the creep and shrinkage losses that are occurring during the long term the relaxation losses that are occurring during the long term and the this is the ratio of uh, stresses after all losses and immediate losses so you can generate these kinds of table very easily it can be generated for stresses as well as for forces no uh, and uh, it doesn't matter if you apply these stresses as stress values or force values you can still uh, uh, extract the result for two either of the two so let's say to Newton you'll see this kind of loss values same thing can be animated in a table format you can go to results and select tendon tension loss graph and you can choose the tendon let's say tendon uh, uh, for the right web and then click animate you will see the steps are changing and the program is showing you the tendon losses in different construction stage and you can read these values and make out whether the uh, uh, these graphs makes sense or not and verify your tendon profile so uh, this was all I wanted to share with you in the uh, webinar uh, of uh, box girders with construction stage analysis but before I wrap up the session let me quickly share one more aspect of uh, Midas Civil here let me just uh, go to the second fine uh, yeah
So uh, if I summarize uh, all the modeling steps here, so we started by defining materials in section, then we def create the structural uh, model by creating nodes and elements and providing boundary condition, then we defined structure groups, boundary groups, load groups, load input and then apply tendons and did the pre-stressing or post-tensioning. Then we define construction stages and uh, uh, the time dependent material properties can be defined at the end or at the beginning and then we perform the analysis. So you can see that uh, this is a simplified approach to construction stage analysis and this can be further simplified by the use of wizards that are there in the software. So if you see here all these steps can be summarized uh, by Midas Civil Wizards where you can just define the material and section property and the wizard will take care of the entire definition of uh, structural model, defining groups, uh, creating construction sequence and entering tendons and everything will be done here. All you need to do is then define the time dependent material link and then perform the analysis. And to show you how simple it is, I'll go into the program itself, open a new file here and I'll go to model structure wizard and then uh, there are several different uh, wizards for uh, segmental construction based on the type of construction methodology you can pick and choose uh, the ones which are uh, favorite uh, or, I mean favorable to your uh, uh, project you can use either incremental launching uh, balance can lever bridge um, or movi movable scaffolding system or fully showed method of construction. Uh, since uh, what we did today is uh, is very similar to span by span construction, so I'll show you how you can generate uh, a bridge in no time using MSS Wizard. So what you can do is uh, uh, this wizard has three tabs: model, section, tendon. On model tab, you can specify the longitudinal profile like. Uh, what is the bridge material? So I'll just quickly define or rather I will just import it from the previous model. The material property that I'll use. Okay, close here. So this is the uh, material then you can define what is the span length you want to have. I will have four spans uh, 1968 and two spans of 2364 and then one span of 1968. So they are unequal spans and right now I'm going with the default values. If you want to consider a, a, a radius of curvature you can include that. You can specify along the longitudinal uh, along the longitudinal axis where you want to have your fixed support. So you can specify that uh, location from the origin and specify which uh, span it is. And then how many uh, segments you want to divide in a span so you can uh, choose that number here I'm using 20 then where you have the cold joint basically when you have the uh, span by span construction then you construct uh, one span and then create some portion of the second span so that the beam is never simply supported as a overhang there and then you have the second uh, span uh, attaching at this location so this particular location becomes your cold joint so you can specify what is the uh, distance of uh, this cold joint from the uh, previous support and then you can specify the anchorage so when you have uh, the tendons which are running through the webs you can specify how much length should be given for overlapping and anchorage and uh, um, you can specify uh, or where those tendons should be anchored how deep inside the uh, previous span and you can specify uh, what is your diaphragm thickness at the supports then how may, what should be your stage duration and what should be the initial member age and what should be the weight of your movable scaffolding system so basically initial member age is uh, how many days you want to give uh, uh, give it for setting of the concrete and before you remove the formwork so that is the age here since uh, it's a segment by segment construction for the span uh, I mean we are giving it like five days of uh, curing before we remove the formwork from there. So when the span will be activated, it will be a five day uh, uh, with con uh, age concrete and then we'll continue the construction and then they will gain on age. So this is just for demo purpose. We are just uh, starting with some values here. I'll move on to the section tab. Here you can define the it's a one cell or two cell uh, section. You can define the different sections for center, for joint and for diaphragm. And then I'll come to the tendon tab 
and here you can define the tenant layout you can select from a uh, uh, different type of uh, uh, layouts and control their variation you can have it in one layer or two layer only thing you need to do is enter these uh, 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 the parameters just by looking at the uh, bitmap image I'll just define the tenant property here real quick uh, let's say web the same as what we just defined um, general tenant area I'll just use uh, the same as previous the duct diameter uh, let's say uh, it was about 10 centimeters so this will be about 4 inch um, then relaxation coefficient and all the other parameters remaining as default I'll click OK and click close so I've defined the tenant material uh, tenant property and I'll be grouting the tendons every one step that means uh, not at the precessing step but in the following stage I'll be grouting it and I've given it the two layer formation and this the distance and then I'll when I click OK the, you will see the program has generated this model for you if I come to works tab you'll see all the data there and then let me uh, display all the support conditions and cycle through the construction sequence so I'll come to first stage and let me zoom out a bit here so that you can see the full model being created and fix the zoom here so you can see at first step this is the uh, roller end and this is a fixed support and the this is the distance given for uh, uh, cold joint I mean the overhang then second step we will have the next pan erected and this will still be the fixed support and this will be the uh, roller end then third step you'll change the support condition from uh, fixed to roller and make the other end as fixed then you come to fourth stage you'll have uh, this end as fixed and the other end as roller and then you have the final construction stage where you can add your superimposed dead loads and tendon pieces and if I uh, just display the tendon profiles here you can see 48 tendons are generated I can choose to click display and you can see them onto the screen they have been applied uh, during throughout the construction sequence let me undisplay it so very basic similar uh, simple geometry uh, uh, span by span construction you can see it can be uh, done in no time in the software uh, just needs little customization here and there you can see all the boundary conditions structure group and load groups are automatically created so uh, the program saves a lot of time on the iterative steps that you have to perform and now you can still go in and modify your uh, uh, set of uh, uh, or rather I should say you can customize the bridge as per your real project and uh, go ahead and do the analysis so this is where the software's uh, uh, power is uh, utilized and um, you can see in no time you can generate different kind of segmental bridges and consider um, all the construction stage analysis and time dependent effects so uh, if you have any uh, questions uh, or concerns you can ask me right away or you can write me an email at my uh, contact detail uh, which I'll be putting up on the screen shortly right here so you can uh, directly uh, give me a call or uh, write an email for your comments and suggestions and I'll be more than happy to reply to response to them